I'm Marie Collins and you have entered the DM Zone. The DM Zone recently went on the road to the Sedona International Film Festival in Sedona, Arizona. We visited with Ed Asner, he was live on stage in Oxymoron, and Richard Dreyfus in a movie called The Light Keepers, a wonderful romance set in 1912. We then visited with Ashley Wren Collins and her partner Sean Bennett in a fun movie called Chasing Taste about a film critic who loses his sense of taste and smell. Then, Sean Lackey and Kevin Farley were in a fun movie called The Yank about an Irish American who finds out he may not be as Irish as he thinks. Lots of fun, great humor. You really need to see that movie. Also, serious topics were covered at the festival. Alzheimer's, water shortage, peace, and immigration reform. These movies, documentaries, and shorts were rooted in peace, lost music, the immigration paradox, and slingshot. It was a wonderful time being able to visit with these creators, young, old, it didn't matter. The thing that was similar about all of them, the passion that they felt for their craft. If you've never attended the Sedona Film Festival, the Sedona International Film Festival, you really need to. It is a, a must-see. It's exciting and fun, parties, movies, live theater, everything combined. I hope you find the time to put it on your list soon. Let's watch these interviews now, okay? Hi, I'm Diane Marie Collins, and you have entered the DM Zone. I am visiting at the Sedona International Film Festival with Lourdes Lee Vasquez. I hope I said yes. Okay. And we're going to talk about her movie, which has got a personal touch for me as well. We're both immigrants. She's just a little closer to the immigration than I am because I'm a fourth generation Arizonan. So let's chat. Lourdes, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here and, and for everyone who's watching for being present. We're going to talk about the thought process that went through. I understand that it was kind of an accident for you to start this movie. It, it sort of was and, and ultimately because you might not believe it but I'm considered supposedly more of an introvert. Not that I want to put myself into categories. I think we have enough of that. <laughs> um, but ultimately I'm one that if other people are speaking and I think it's good and it's working that I want to just sit down and support but I feel like I was feeling with this you know issue of immigration that no one else really was standing up to you know a higher standard of the immigration issue it just kept being black and white you know Republican Democrat kind of thing and so I decided to just you know start doing a documentary based on our uh, misconceptions our um, lack of information and how we view one another now what the thing that I think separates a lot and angers and gets the the the, the blood bo boiling is not the immigration so much as the illegal immigration. The fact that I had a great 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 grandfather that was Scottish that came through Ellis Island. I had a Mexican grandmother whose house is still a museum in Tempe, but the border crossed over her. She was in Mexico anyway. <laughs> we became Arizona. Um, so I think there's, did you cover that? Did you want to think about that as part of your story? Um, not as much um, as perhaps maybe some other documentaries have. We really wanted to focus on the root cause issue for this. And so that's what led us to economics, uh, to free trade agreements, to the international International Monetary Fund, World Bank, um, things of that sort to uh, explore more as to why this uh, underdeveloped countries are, are, are not yet developed even though you know they got colonized perhaps you know over 500 years. So what's going on here? What's happening? Uh, where are all their resources going? Uh, how come they're not uh, economically self-sustainable? So, so those are some of the questions that were more um, 
we explore more in the documentary and and ultimately because that's where sort of the story took us you're gonna die in poverty and your children won't have the opportunities you did it's time to rethink the way that you're living your life got rid of the blacks, we brought in Mexicans and Chinese. The natural state of things is for there to be significant inequalities. It's just fucked up. It's ridiculous. That when they're called out on the contradiction, it's just a flat out denial or you're playing the race card. Why should anyone be offended if you're asked if you're in the country Ill illegally? How the hell did I end up over here? I've never been asked questions like these before. So matter if you're white, black, Brown. This is really kind of getting at the heart of America's communities, and the destabilizing effects impact everybody. You can point to some very specific factors in our economy that are responsible for our current economic downturn. The system is already in place for them to come. But there is a lot of information out there that is false. That's the problem are the ideas that people have about others. I was born in Mexico, but it was American-made. This is a story about employment, conformity, honor, and the system which keeps it all going. We have choices to make. Are you trying to be constructive and figure out the best way to resolve the problem, or are you um, just demonizing another group of people? Do you think that you've got the answers? The answers to what? Why? <laughs> <laughs> Why do we come here? I believe we do. And I mean, I say that um, because I myself as an immigrant, you know, and so I know the why within my personal story. And um, luckily and fortunately, you know, um, I, my family and I, we didn't have to cross the desert. And that was why, that's why I was, you know, curious to know why most folks would like risk their lives crossing the desert. Um, I would ask them like, why don't you get a visa? Because that's how we came, you know? Um, but, you know, luckily my, um, my parents, you know, we were able to get a visa because we had a home in Mexico City because we had, uh, you know, money in the bank, you know, all these things that most folks who end up migrating don't have. Mm -hmm. And those are the requirements that you have to present in order to get a visa. And so it's interesting sometimes when you hear people saying, well, why don't they come here the right way? You know, why don't they come here legally? And, and so I think more than anything, more than fighting and saying, oh, well, why don't you go back to Europe? Why don't you get deported? You know, it's like, well, let's educate them. You know, and, and I think that the conversations that I've had with folks who sometimes tell that to me and sometimes not in a very nice tone, mm -hmm. you know, just like I try to um, tone down myself and, and just kind of educate. And I think that's what we need more with this conversation of immigration. I think oftentimes people are just um, someone, you know, provokes them. And, and I understand it's human nature. I do it sometimes, too. And, and, and if that happens to me, sometimes I just walk away because I just don't want to, like, make it rise, you know. And so ultimately, yeah, I mean, even from, from such a um, topic or, or such a, I guess, name as illegal, right? right. Um, I personally don't like to use the term illegal. And I know a lot of pro-immigrant groups don't like to use the term illegal. We prefer to use undocumented or unauthorized uh, because illegal in itself already uh, puts some preconceived notions, you know, um, that perhaps someone illegal, you know, is a criminal, someone who kills someone, so therefore they deserve to go to jail. And that's where we get more into the whole privatization, right, of, of, the, of the prisons now, too. With SB 1070, now pe uh, police officers are able to stop anyone with a probable cause, which is, you know, very subjective. You could stop anyone for any reason, and they end up going to jail. And so since it has become more of a privatization of, of this, you know, you could say multinational corporation, it, it's good for them to have more people in prison. And so who ends up getting hurt? It's, you know, um, oftentimes the folks who are immigrants who don't have papers, but then oftentimes more of the uh, lower socioeconomic status uh, folks living in the United States as well. So the, the point, the reason why I know that you don't like the word and I understand that, um, 
there are reasons that that comes above and I understand that I think the best thing that you've said is communication and education and that's all going to be part of the discussion on what we need to do in this country for immigration reform and I thank you for starting the conversation with some really strong points. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's been so wonderful visiting with you. Thank you for spending time. I told you you would enjoy those interviews. I had so much fun at the Sedona International Film Festival. And remember, you have been in the DM Zone. Come back soon.